you've been studying Yiddish here? What got you interested? Um, it was a mixture of a few things. As I said, it was just being um, familiarized with Yiddish music and Yiddish culture, the movies and um, literature and stuff like that, which I found really interesting and I hadn't really been exposed to it beforehand. Um, and then there were political reasons. I mean, I'm probably just a... I mean, I guess there's not too many of us, but I guess there's a lot of people who get to Yiddish for that reason, of Yiddish being some kind of um, romanticized outsider culture who's like perpetually oppressed. Um, and so a lot of different groups kind of find um, comfort or a home in, in like reviving or being part of Yiddish culture. Um, whether it's queer communities or anarchist communities, anti-Zionist communities, or I'm sure plenty of other communities. So I kind of event, I mean, that was kind of what helped me get there. I remember like the first time I really, my, I was talking to my brother, my older brother, and he mentioned something about Yiddish anarchists once, and I was like, oh, that's cool. And then somebody posted on Facebook a video to the song, Hey, Hey, Deloy Police, which is Hey, Hey, Down With The Police. Um, and I'm like, wow, this song is awesome. It's like in Yiddish, and they're talking about like burying the burying the czar with his mother and just tearing down the police. And I was like, wow, like Yiddish culture is cool. And then my brother played for me this song, um, this new version of the song, Oi Ir Narashet Zionisten, or that's probably not the right gramma, grammar, but oh well, um, which means um, oh you foolish Zionist, which is like an old, which later I found out was like an old Bundes song, um, kind of mocking the Zionists. And I recently found out that people also use that melody to make a song mocking the Bundes. So I like that dialogue between people mocking each other. Um, and that kind of I came to that. I went through that process along with a, a friend of mine who also works with me and. I mean, we were both kind of getting very active politically at the same time, and I don't want to speak for him, but for me, it was kind of a period where I was being perpetually accused of um, betraying my religion and my culture and for having opinions that like were different than what most people in Israel think or what the Israeli government thinks, and that's like not Jewish. And I was, I mean, I've been like, things have been done to me, like I've been spat on and people have called me Nazi and stuff like that. But I've also seen, like been with a rabbi who's worn a kippah and that just like drives people crazy that he could have like those kind of um, feelings of like believing in human rights and equality and like wear a kippah at the same time, even though he supports like Arab rights as well, just drives people crazy. So to be able to discover that there is a history of Jewish like resistance and anarchy and or anarchism um, and like um, resistance and struggle and all that and kind of realizing that I'm not inventing the wheel and I'm not going against tradition but I'm finding myself inadvertently part of this tradition was very helpful to me at that time um, which was really nice so um, so I kind of became much more interested in the culture um, and then I found out about people like Daniel Kahn, who has been really important to me just because he sings all the coolest songs and he is able to make all those connections between what people were saying 70, 80, 100 years ago and things that are happening now and not even Jewish struggles, but being able to connect those ideas of like solidarity and resistance with things that are happening today um, which is really amazing. Um, so, so that's kind of ha what kind of pushed me towards Yiddish culture in a sense.